What it do, fly in here, and today we're going to be talking about one of the most obscure places that important lore has ever shown up. Now, longtime fans of the Xeno games know already that series producer Tetsuya Takahashi is no stranger to putting important story elements in not the most ideal of places. For example, the uh, Japan-only Pied Piper game, which goes over an important character backstory that ties in with Xenosaga 3, that was released on specific obscure mobile phones, as well as a missing year, which details the events leading up to Xenosaga 3 that was only released on, I believe, what, Namco's website, and uh, disappeared after the release of Xenosaga 3. Even a substantial amount of Xenogears lore is written within a book, but I feel like that's the least egregious way to add supplementary lore to your games. Kingdom Hearts and Nier comes to mind when I think about lore in obscure places. In regards to Kingdom Hearts, Tetsuya Nomura considers Takahashi as one of his seniors who took care of him um, at the start of his career at Square. Perhaps his philosophy and where to put important lore and story is greatly inspired by Takahashi. The two Tetsuyas, always up to some trouble. Which brings me to one of the most obscure places that Xenolore has ever found itself, and that is the Japan-only Siren Model Kit. Look at this bad boy. It's so glossy. And yeah, this thing's actually, this thing's actually enormous. <laughs> oh my god. A figure kit somehow holds very important information regarding Xenoblade 2 and the entire Xeno universe. Before I get into any of that, spoiler warning ahead, I'll be talking about gameplay elements in Xenoblade 2 and Xenogears that some would consider spoilers. However, I won't be delving too much into the stories or anything, so proceed at your own risk. I actually have the Siren Model Kit completed up there. I'd bring it down and show you, but to be honest, I did um, an absolutely horrendous job in crafting that thing. It would most certainly fall apart if I brought it down. It was uh, one of the first figure kits I ever made, and you know, I'll definitely revisit it sometime and, and fix it. For now, it remains in stasis. So where exactly is this hidden lore within the Siren Model Kit? Well, in the step-by-step -step manual of the Siren Model Kit, there is a forward that has Mui Mui. He reveals to us that there is ancient text he cannot decipher from the land of Mortha, which we know as one of the only parts of Klaus's world that was taken and put into the world of All Rest. Well, I can't read Japanese either, but there's a user by the name of Luggelbanda who was kind enough to do a translation on their blog site, which will be available in the description if you want to check that out. Now let's read through this, shall we? It's Mui Mui. I, Mui Mui, am an inquisitive, curious notepon versed in robotics. Sometimes I'm too curious and I involve myself in cock and ball torture. Okay, maybe I shouldn't do the voice. And I find crazy things in my possession. Just the other day, I was scammed by a salvager who told me he had gone to the very bottom of the Cloud Sea, the land of Moritha. What was I fooled into getting, you ask? I was fooled into getting text written in some gibberish sheaths. He lured me into getting it by saying that if I could decode it, I could understand the secrets of the Aegis and make significant strides in robotics. And I just went along with it. But no one can read this gibberish ease. Maybe the legendary Nopon Arcsage could. In any case, I can't read it, so it means nothing to me. Meh. I should have just used this money to buy a year's worth of pollen orbs instead. Uh, drug addict. Uh, anyway, I'm releasing these texts that I spent so much on to get. If someone can read it, please share it with me. Then I'll use the secrets of the Aegis and make an artificial blade that is way bigger and better than Rosa. Siren. Siren is an artifice, a class of terminal interface weapons, that was manufactured in the orbital ring found in the lower orbit of Earth. A distinctive feature that these artifices have is that they were not weapons created by humans, they were created by a collective of artificial intelligence known as the Trinity Processor, and designed as a class of weapons meant to be devices to the core, the gate, aka the conduit. Put another way, the artifices are cells of a larger autonomous system. Because of this, the weapons that were created had been created in a way that was fundamentally different from that of a human weapon. Within the orbital ring, there is a massive academic institution known as Aeodos. I'll get back to you on that. This massive institution was formerly confined to a small university laboratory. But at the beginning of the 21st century, a scientist from the laboratory found a certain magnetic abnormal matter in Africa. This matter, later to be known as the Gate, was at first simply an intriguing artifact that was stratigraphically out of place, being so technologically advanced. 
As research continued, it was proven that the gate was a perpetual motion machine that defied the laws of energy and also that this was the source of the magnetic abnormalities being detected. In response to this, the unified government formed a research institution for further study, and because this institution required a vast amount of resources and people, Iodos was born. According to a report filed 10 years after the formation of Iodos, the gate was, as the name implied, a gate. It had the function of a door that could connect multiple universes. It is not hard to imagine where a multiverse joint, English localization is meta-universe manifold, to exist on the surface of the planet. That there would be catastrophic consequences for Earth as a whole if an accident were to happen. During this time period, the unified government set up three orbital tower beanstalks on the equator. First tower, Radamantis, Second tower, Aceus. Third tower, Minos, and these towers were connected to the lower orbital portion to create the orbital ring. This project was set forth by Aeodis, and the orbital ring was meant as a way to further study the gate far from the surface of Earth. At this research facility, a governing artificial intelligence collective known as the Trinity Processor was raised to maintain the gate. The processor using biocomputer elements was raised in a virtual reality to gain a personality, and the system would be used to govern the gate. The Trinity processor would go on to expand systems to govern the gate without the interference of humans. It was during this process that many of the artifices were created, out of necessity to protect the orbital ring. Rebel groups not aligned with the unified government were all demanding that the gate be handed over, after all. Because of their unique origin, the artifices come with unique functions not found in man-made weapons. Artifices do not have any internal engine. They have a built-in system known as a slave generator to receive energy input from the gate to function. Artifices all have an emerald gate-shaped crystal that functions as the receiver for the slave generator. Siren has a charged particle laser that is connected directly to the slave generator. And this is what makes it able to shoot a massive laser beam. In actuality, it is more accurate to say that the slave generator charged particle beam had some additional upgrades to make it what it is on Siren. Siren was a shining blade, a beautiful and simple device meant to be wielded against those the Trinity processor deemed a threat. There is a design philosophy to it that won't be found in anything man-made. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack here. Let's start with the similarities between Xenoblade 2 and the other Xeno games. By far the most significant information we learn from the figure kit is that the artifices are not man-made whatsoever. The Trinity processor, similar to Kodomini from Xenogears, made its own defense mechanism, the artifices that use slave generators like Xenogears to harness power from the Zohar slash conduit and exist to protect said conduit and the orbital space station. The artifices are described as terminal interface weapons, like the Diabolos are referred to as which defend Deus and Xenogears, and were created to fight and protect like they're essentially white blood cells. Another very interesting point that the ancient text revealed is that the conduit was excavated in Africa in the 21st century, uh, much like the Zohar in Xenosaga and possibly the Zohar in Xenogears. In Xenogears, they don't mention specifically where it's found in the perfect works, but my guess would also be Africa, the birthplace of humanity. I wonder why that similarity remains between the Zohars, despite the differences in how they look and function between the games. And I also wonder if they ever shipped off the conduit to Toronto, Canada, like they did with the Zohar and Xenosaga, and yes, that is canon. There's a universe out there where Drake uh, goes and parties next to the Zohar. Just keep that in mind. Now, why is all of this significant? This is information that wasn't in the base game of Xenoblade 2 uh, at all, but it further ties the Xenoblade universe with the overall Xeno universe of the other games. And it's through the information that we found in a figure kit that's been scalped to hell and back. Pricing aside, it's both really cool and a little bit absurd that this information exists within this figure kit. I wouldn't be opposed to hiding lore nuggets like that in a similar fashion in the future. The Xeno series doesn't really make that much merchandise relative to a lot of other IPs, so I wouldn't mind if they changed that in the future and, you know, tossed in a little bit of lore, who knows what else Mui Mui might find. The mentioning of the conduit that brings in all these like multiple universes open up a lot of theories. Can all the Xeno universes theoretically exist within the universe of Xenoblade adjacent to it, maybe? Can multiple conduits and Zohars also simultaneously exist within these universes? Or is there only one Zohar per fourth dimensional universe? 
Was there something more inside the orbital space station that the artifices were protecting? Maybe something similar to Deus? All IP differences aside, it's something cool to think about and theorize, and it's all thanks to the goddamn Siren Model Kit. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on the information that was presented by the Siren Model Kit. Uh, shout out again to Logal Banda for the translation. But that's it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this lore video. I brought up the Siren Kit in a past video, and I figured, okay, I'll go maybe more in-depth into it today. I had a little bit of time. Feel free to follow me on Twitch if you want to see more stuff like this, or subscribing to YouTube if you want more of this juicy content. But yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Take care.